Hello YouTube, it is Saturday, February 12th, 2022, 12.09 p.m. And uh, I have had a lot happen since the last crappy uh, Obama phone video. And I wasn't able to shoot any more crappy Obama phone videos because the crappy Obama phone ran out of space. And um, the shop that, uh, by Bullocks that I was having fix my iPhone messed it up really bad um, fortunately this store here did an amazing job uh, fixing it all up and granted like what the other guy did was probably covered in his warranty but I was just so paranoid about the other guy and, and attempting to fix it more bricking it and destroying it and me losing the last like three days of these vlogs which haven't been uploaded yet so i um, really happy with the store here. It's called Eye Repair on the uh, south uh, southeast corner of 16th Street and Bethany Home. So um, definitely will be bringing some more uh, more devices their way. Uh, he actually seems really positive about fixing my last iPhone from before this one, uh, which has a board level issue. Um, you know, there there've been some red flags with me in that that little cell phone repair store next to uh, next to um, next to Bullock's Cocktails, but uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of the last straw this time. Um, and I'll talk about that more, maybe at some point. I don't really feel like talking about it now. So, uh, Swizzle In Cocktails. You know, this is a spot I've heard of before and I don't think I've ever been to. Wow, a neighborhood bar I've never been to in Phoenix. It's hard to believe that there is such a thing. I'm really tempted to go in there just to see what the spot is like, but uh, no, not today. Other things I'm trying to take care of today. And it looks like I found a fun shortcut from that bar to Bethany Home Road. So I, I think what I'm gonna do right now, not, the, not that the bill is due anytime soon, but since I'm kind of money ahead due to my uh, first, uh, second, second payday from Amazon, uh, first one with a with a with an entire week of mandatory overtime on it. Um, yeah, that put me money ahead. Uh, so I think I'm going to try to instead of pissing it away on bullshit, which is always tempting to do when I have extra money. Uh, I think I'm going to pay my. Uh, internet my cox bill early mostly because i'm i'm fairly close to the cox store uh, so I, I checked the bus schedule before i started shooting this video and it was about 22 more minutes until the route 16 was or sorry the route route 60 was going to show up which would take me from this intersection i hate those blowers they're so loud I'm not even trying to talk over that damn thing. That is a really cool looking tree. It's a nice thing about walking. You get to notice things like that. that I, I notice things like that, that I just drive right by, drive right by so fast that, so as not to notice them. Uh, anyway, so I was looking at about 20, 22 minutes, I think, until the Route 60 would be along, and that would take me directly to the Cox store. The Cox store is at about 20th Street in Camelback. So yeah, the Route 16 goes south on 16th Street from Bethany Home to Camelback, and then it turns and goes uh, east for a mile to 24th Street. Um, or I could have... Well, that actually was going to be my next bus. I had just barely missed the 16 southbound. Because I was also considering taking the 16 and, and just walking down Camelback. But it's a really beautiful day out today. And I'm just so happy to be able to shoot a vlog again on my iPhone. Um, yeah, I've spent, spent pretty much since 6 p.m. yesterday thinking, thinking that it may have been completely bricked. And trying to... Uh, thank you. 
that guy was nice enough to yield to me. Um, and, and thinking that it may have been completely, completely destroyed. Is that, yeah, things with it were that bad. Um, and I've already had to say this story to like four different people, <laughs> including the guy who just fixed it. So I, I don't feel like reliving it. Just suffice it to say the phone was fucked up. And the worst thing about it was not only was it fucked up, but when I got it back from the repair guy, he just tried to normalize the entire thing and blow smoke up my ass and then try to tell me that the problem was due to the fact that I hadn't installed the latest iOS update. Yeah, none of that. And even I got this repair shop, was like, that's insane, none of that. I mean, you know, if you don't have the absolute latest version of iOS, it's not gonna cause the problems you're having. You know, at best, that's gonna give you some apps that don't work. Now I am gonna, when I get home, install that latest iOS update, and I'm crossing my fingers that maybe it'll fix the uh, the error that I've been having since I started this vlog of the phone telling me I'm out of space when I'm not out of space. But uh, yeah, it was it was. Oh, the screen was just the brand new screen was really dark and illegible over about a. 30% of it, and it also had uh, oh, eeny, meeny, miny south. Well, and the street has no sidewalks. That's a bike route, though. That's worth something, I guess. Oh, if we're all safe, I'll be safe just walking here not too much vehicle traffic on this road so in spite of the fact that it doesn't have sidewalks I should be okay walking on the edge <laughs> those are some famous last words right I should have been okay Friday or sorry should have been okay Monday walking on the sidewalk and I got hit by a car so yeah pardon me for not feeling very safe trying to share an environment with gigantic trucks like that Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I don't know if it's, you know, any, it's probably going to end up taking me 20 minutes to do this walk versus 20 minutes waiting for the bus. I don't know. It's a crapshoot, which is, which is quicker walking or, uh, or waiting for the Route 60 over there, but I'm, uh, I'm walking because it's a beautiful day. And I think at this point I'm about, about a third of the way done with my walk, so, um, Gosh, what was I? Gonna, what the hell was I going to talk about other than, holy shit! I thought my phone was destroyed. Um, uh, let's see. Since the last video, what has happened? I think the last video was was uh, me coming out of. Yeah, I remember now. It was me coming out of uh, the Wells Fargo Bank near Christown, uh, and them being super helpful there and letting me getting me access uh, access to their Wi-Fi on the crap-ass new service Obama phone so I could use the Wells Fargo app to freeze my missing debit card and in spite of the fact that I didn't even have my driver's license. Um, got the driver's license problem mostly resolved. Um, Priscilla helped me out with that this morning. Um, in fact, the last time. I lose shit. Have you all noticed that? That's a recurring theme in this vlog. I lose shit. Um, it's been going on since I was a kid. It's just, it's just part of being me. Now, granted, I lost a lot less shit when I had my car. This was a nice place to keep my shit. But, you know, now that I'm on, on foot, I, it's a little bit more of a challenge to not lose shit. Uh, anyway, so last time I misplaced my driver's license, she was able to... Uh, able to replace it through the MVD website. Um, like, yeah, I, I, I know it can be done, I just don't know how to do it. She's familiar with the process, so it was nice to have her uh, handle it for me. And, um, yeah, replacement driver's license will be in the mail soon. Uh, how long? I don't have any idea. She said that the website didn't give any kind of... Uh, Said the last time she did it, it gave a. Uh, it it said it, it said approximately when I, I would receive it, and then it didn't do that this time. So, 
hopefully the MVD isn't too delayed with mailing them out, but it's, whatever it is, it's beyond my control. I just need to watch the mail and wait and hope. Um, so, uh, after, uh, so yeah, that, that's one problem that's, that's handled. Uh, still don't know what's up with my, my, uh, Wells Fargo. I still haven't, you know, found my missing Wells Fargo debit card, but at least, you know, I've got it frozen in the app and that's, that's a minor inconvenience. I'm just going to give that a couple of days and see if it, see if it shows up. Um, I, I realize most likely it won't, but, um, it's, uh, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't. Um, and I, I saw right in the app that I, I had an option for ordering a replacement or whatever. So I'll, uh, I'll deal with that later for the time being. I'm just fine with it, uh, with it shut off and, you know, temporarily shut off through the app. And, uh, and, um, yeah. And it's just a minor inconvenience. I don't see it really impacting me in the next week or so. Um, so yeah, I was on my way to Target. Uh, so, uh, mission accomplished to Target. I got the, uh, new ABBA album Voyage, uh, Target limited edition on translucent yellow vinyl with an exclusive cover. Um, by the time I got home, I was so damn tired that I didn't even crack the seal on it. I got it in one of my, uh, one of my old, uh, coax shelves, Ikea coax shelves, uh, next to some other special records. In fact, if I remember right, I put it right next to my Dr. Domeno box set, which also isn't really properly put away, but, um, yeah, that box set doesn't get properly put away very often. It kind of goes between me actively playing it and me sticking it somewhere that's not properly put away um, to me moving it from there and actively playing it again. Uh, I forget the name of that box set, but it's freaking awesome. And also worth quite a bit. Uh, last time I looked on Discogs, it was going for a, a pretty penny. It's uh, been out of print for a long time. And might not be the most desired uh, thing for vinyl collectors, but there's uh, enough demented people that, uh, yeah, the price for that set tends to stay, stay, kind of stay up there. So, and and honestly, I'm not the kind of person who buys, you know, records as an investment. <laughs> it's always funny when that kind of subject comes up on uh, on uh, our vinyl or our vinyl jerk on Reddit. Um, and people are like, hey, should I get this? Is this a good, is buying this record a good investment? <laughs> I had a, I had a, I think it was an R vinyl the last time that subject came up. It's so funny, the, the line between R vinyl and vinyl, R vinyl jerk is so blurred these days. Sometimes I'm not even sure which subreddit I'm commenting on. I just leave my snarky two cents wherever I leave my snarky two cents. But somebody was sarcastically asking, um, like somebody had said something about, yeah, you know, vinyl is not a good investment. You know, you, this is, you should invest in, you know, these are good investment strategies, blah, blah, blah. By the way, I'm a investment counselor or something like, I forget what the hell his title was, but I mean, the guy works in finance. Like he's, this is what he does for a living. He throws that in and it was funny. And then somebody responded to him, Hey, since you're an investment counselor, would it be, what could I, and I'm sure he was just being sarcastic. You know, he's like, would it be a good idea for me to, uh, uh, cash out my, cash out my IRA and, uh, and, uh, and move all that money into, uh, into Taylor Swift vinyl variants. <laughs> and, and a handful of people were chiming in on like, actually looking, looking at the current, current prices for Taylor Swift vinyl on eBay that might not be a bad move and I just had to chime in that yeah that's uh ironically that's how I how I paid my rent in October um <laughs> Taylor Swift it's you know, saying uh vinyl is not a good investment but straight up <laughs> Taylor Swift vinyl was probably my my overall best investment last year 
in terms of, uh, or should I say, the, the year before, and my best investment in 2020, in terms of uh, return on investment. I bought all those records. I bought all those Taylor Swift records for around, I want to say around $15 each, $14 each, $12 each, more or less. Uh, some of them from from Target, some of them from Walmart, and most of them sold for over a hundred bucks. So yeah, the uh, ROI on the Taylor Swift final was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny, like this whole thread of like, of uh, oh yeah, the vinyl is a terrible investment. What can you do it on Taylor Swift vinyl? Actually, Taylor Taylor Swift vinyl may be the exception. Huh. Well, it's been a long time since I got through this part of town. These these townhouses are brand new. Never even noticed those before. Uh, so I'm walking southbound on I think 18th Street. Yeah, 18th Street, and I've got a sidewalk now. Yay. Um, just crossed Missouri. Uh, you know, different different places in Phoenix have, have had different surges in home values, and this is a neighborhood that has really gone up in value in terms of what the houses were selling for a decade ago and what they're selling for now. And you can see there's like a lot of homes that are very custom here. And, and most of these, what, what happens is the, the investors buy them and then take advantage of the whole, if you leave a certain percent of the original structure standing, that it's, it's a remodel, not a new build. I'd be willing to bet money that that white house with the black roof was a remodel, not a rebuild. And uh, I bet whoever owns that one, it's not looking all so pretty at the moment. In fact, wow, that fence looks like hell. Uh, I bet whoever owns that house, which is kind of dingy looking for the neighborhood, I bet that guy gets it's two letters a week from property investors offering to pay him cash for his house. And that's all the sidewalk I get. Apparently that sidewalk was put in by whatever developer put in these townhouses. I can only imagine what those townhouses sell for. Uh, probably starting in the low 600s to live in a something that's ugly and boxy and has no yard. That's a hard pass for me, dog. Yeah, I would love to love to own a house in this neighborhood, but I would say that ship has permanently sailed. Oh, yeah, I need to not be worrying about buying a house as much as you know, having having a reliable, drivable car. Um, probably a better cell phone situation, although so far so good since uh, the repair from the second shop. Uh, he replaced my battery, which was kind of I, I know it was kind of going I do think that the last repair shop uh, fucked it up I think he did something that, that cooked what was left of my battery but I think the last time I checked it it was at like I want to say 86 percent health 88 percent health something like that and I was looking in the uh, uh, the iPhone success subreddit because yeah there's a subreddit for that um, and the general consensus is that by the time there it's in the low 80s it's time to replace it so um so that's that's fine um the the guy at the repair shop that i just left the the one on 16th street in camel uh 16th street in um bethany home uh it I described what was up with the screen. He said most likely that it was a bad screen. Sometimes they're like that. Just, you know, replacement screens are just bad for the manufacturer. And that's why you really want to test them before you fully install them. Uh, I want to share this. Sorry, I'm just getting sidetracked. and making not a lot of sense, but that's kind of normal for this blog. Um, so I'm at the corner of 18th Street and Oregon. I wasn't sure which street this was. And I just kind of wanted to show how the street has a house on the north, a house on the south, and a big old wall. Um, this is one of those neighborhoods that was cut in half um, by the building of a freeway. Um, 
Yeah, I don't think that was a racial thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the freeway was used to divide whites from blacks. Um, this was a pretty solid, solidly white neighborhood on both sides of that retaining wall. Interesting. Uh, there would be an alley there and it's fenced off, but it looks like an easement. It doesn't look like the property owner on the north or the south of the alley has claimed that alley. It's fenced off by somebody. That's interesting. At least I find stuff like that interesting. Uh, that's, that is a pretty neat little playground in the front yard going on there. Never noticed that before. I like it. Um, wow. Quite the interesting custom modifications on that house. I dig it. Wow, this guy's definitely got some kids going on. Look at that. We got a trampoline in the backyard. A whole other two different trampoline cages and some other kind of playground structure going on there. Neat. I miss having a private private yard to do that kind of stuff with. I don't know, we got a zoning adjustment going on for that property. See, there's been quite a remodel there. I can see where a door has been moved. My guess is they're probably trying to get a variance to turn that into a duplex. And that one's still got the alley there, and it looks like the uh, Phoenix Waste Management Department has just enough alley to back in and empty those trash cans and then and then drive out or maybe drive in and back out but yeah the alley just goes to the wall and ends interesting i find stuff like that interesting i would imagine most people that watch this vlog find it boring as shit but i've always found uh just the placement of easements and alleys and then how they get changed when freeways or other developments come come along and change them to be very fascinating such as this here here we have an orange drive and just like the last street it's been turned into a stub with one house on the north one house on the south i almost wonder the necessity of the stub like what would it take for both of these homeowners to actually buy this street and and make it their private property and and split it amongst themselves and just have the curb there on 18th street but i guess then they have to change their address to north 18th street instead of east orange drive and what i was trying to show i don't know what the hell i was thinking because as i walked towards the, the wall where the freeway is uh, I, I obviously i can't see over it but what i was seeing when i was back here at 18th street looking down this little stub of what's left of orange drive uh, most definitely orange drive before the 51 squaw peak parkway was built went straight across probably all the way to 16th street um if memory serves but what you can see on the other side a little bit is clearly uh um some lar a large apartment building so um i would imagine that when that street got bought up by a dot to build the freeway um they probably just bought every damn house all the way across and then turned around and flipped that property to the uh, developer who built those big apartments on the other side. Now, this one's interesting. Now here you can see the whole thing like an easement has been purchased by a property owner because you've got the you got the remnants of the driveway for the alley and this is where the alley would be and here you can see where the original fence ended there and a, a new fence has been built here with a uh, with a gate right up against what was the other neighbor's uh, fence that went up to the alley. And I can kind of see, just looking through the slats in the fence, that they've expanded their backyard and put in a swimming pool. 